you get the card. If you could please say again and spell your full name for us. Yep, my name is Tom, T-O-M, last name Snyder, S-N-Y-D-E-R, and I'm a captain with the East Police District here with the Madison Police Department. Okay, so please tell us what you can with relevant information about this crime scene. Yep. Just before 4 p.m., officers were dispatched to a person who had been shot in the leg uh, in a metro bus just adjacent to the uh, LaFollette High School, Senate, High School, Senate Middle School area on Flom Road. Um, officers arrived who made contact with a number of people, um, ended up uh, transporting a 16-year-old male to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Um, fortunately, the school had pretty much closed for the day and buses were taking people home at the time. Uh, it looked like this was a full bus of students leaving the area when there was a shot fired from the back of the bus. But the circumstances of how that shot was fired is still being investigated. Um, at this point, we believe there's only one person who's injured. Um, we had an immediate lockdown of area businesses as well as the high school and the middle school. Um, we are now systematically taking students out of the schools, the students that were remaining in the schools, and making sure that the building is safe. Um, we had a report that someone had a handgun that was fleeing the bus, so we are further investigating that and trying to determine all those people who were involved. Excellent. And so to confirm that person was seen fleeing the bus with a handgun, that would mean that this person who committed this crime is still out there? Well, we don't know if this was a crime or this was an accident or unintentional shooting. Um, we have video from the bus, which we have been looking at, that gives us some clues. Uh, but at this point, we don't know exactly what happened or how it happened. We just know that one person is injured, and we're going to try to make sure that no one else was hurt that we're not aware of. Uh, the bus pretty much emptied out, obviously, before officers arrived. The victim was still in the bus when officers got here. We've got parents, kids still at school. Can you give them an update? When is their kid going to be able to get out? Yeah, the, the good news is school had ended, so most of the school uh, had left. Most of the students had left. Obviously, there still were sporting teams that were practicing. There were some MSCR kids uh, involved in activities inside of the building. Uh, we locked it down because we, didn't want, we wanted to make sure that the person who was seen fleeing with the firearm did not get into the school. Um, we don't believe that happened, but right now we're slowly taking the kids out one at a time, identifying them, checking the school, making sure that the suspect did not get into the school and there's no firearm that was left behind. So it should be completed very soon. If parents are trying to get in touch with their kids or get to the area of the schools, what's the best mode of action for them to get up here? Um, probably the best thing for them to do, uh, if they can't make phone contact with their students, they're welcome to come to the Walgreens and Flom and Monona Drive. Uh, but at this point, I think most of the kids have been let out of the school. And this individual with a handgun, is there a description that you could give us about this individual? Uh, a description was very generic. Uh, teenager, African-American, juvenile, dark clothing. Do you believe the suspect knew the victim in this case? I think probably just so everyone involved knew one another. Um, this was a bus. These kids ride the same bus every day. Um, a group of folks that were together, sitting together. So we've identified uh, most of them as, as best we can. And um, I think that we'll have some answers pretty shortly. Was this bus coming from picking up students from school? Yes, this bus was on its, it was just leaving school. So it, would it be safe to assume that the student had the handgun at school? That's a presumption that we can make at this point. We haven't determined if that is the case or not because we, we haven't been able to contact everyone involved. Obviously, the person that fled the bus with the, with the firearm, we need to talk to that individual. Are we able to have a victim and suspect both students have a problem? Well, everyone in the bus, to my knowledge, is a student at, at the school. Yes. Um, Metro bus, obviously, you could use the camera, correct? Yeah, Metro, Metro folks have been great. They brought people on site real quick, were able to pull that video, let detectives look through that, so that's been very helpful. On a day where it already spread so thin, um, you've got officers down in Middleton right now. To have another incident, how, how are you guys handling this? Well, it's been a heck of a day. Uh, we have three different command posts set up where we have Madison police uh, occupying currently. Um, fortunately, we were able to call in officers early this afternoon. Um, those people that work in inside positions were all able to come out and help with patrol staffing. So 
we're doing okay right now. It's 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 really tested our resources certainly, but we're, we're okay. Is it disheartening for you guys? I mean, yeah, I know some. I think it's recognized in fact the two from the team in Middleton who may have been there for a while. But yeah, but it's it's calm. Calm. Yeah, we have had several people that were at the initial incident in Middleton respond out here as well. So certainly that's difficult, and it's been a long day for people. It's been a stressful day, and for those folks that remain in Middleton, they're probably going to be there through the night. So um, yeah, it's, it's taxing on resources, no doubt about it. Have you ever seen something like this before where there's just so much seemingly concentrated in one period of time? Well, we have certainly had multiple command posts and multiple crime scenes going on simultaneously. Certainly what happened in Middleton today was you know, more extreme than what we typically see. Um, the, the good news in terms of, of this, this incident here, it was relatively isolated and um, I think that we're going to make progress in determining exactly what happened pretty quickly. And just to confirm, this is the bus? Waiting. Yes, correct. And we're still waiting for the um, one of the resources that has been scarce are our investigators, the crime scene technicians. Uh, they were all at Middleton. We've called in additional folks to help, but we're still waiting for them to arrive at the scene and process the bus. So that's been that's been a delay. So just recap one more time: the suspect you are looking for, height, weight, description. Um, it's very vague right now. I would say uh, probably 15 to 17 year old uh, African American male wearing dark clothing who was last seen with a handgun fleeing the bus towards the area of Holland High School. And then real quick recap on our victim and his status. Yep, uh, the victim uh, has a gunshot wound to the leg. Um, it is not a life-threatening injury, I am told. And detectives are on scene. He's been conscious alert, talking to the detectives. And um, he's, he's gonna pull out of this, okay. Thank you very much. This is confirmed victim is male. Correct. Okay, I uh, just wanna ask you, because I think you spoke a little bit too, is there anything right now you have a cell phone? What led to this? Uh, you know, it sounds like you guys may be at least looking. Could this have been accidental? Uh, but do you have anything, you know, that witnesses or anything like that told you? Yeah, we've interviewed a number of witnesses. Um, we're not getting complete cooperation from everyone that was on the bus. Uh, it does not appear that there was any kind of a disturbance or dispute that led up to the gunshot. Um, so exactly what happened prior to the, the gunshot occurring, we're not certain. Thank you for your time. Yep. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. So just to recap, Adam Duxer with uh, WISC, we have a school here, pardon me, a city bus that was carrying students uh, from La Follette High School. Um, it was at that time that uh, a student, um, who they believe to be a student, shot a, another uh, student. The victim in the situation is currently in the hospital with uh, what they're calling non-life-threatening injuries. They said he was shot in the leg. They are still actively looking for the suspect who's described as a teenage male. So again, something we're going to continue to follow, but you heard Captain Snyder of Madison Police there. The situation on a day where already so much is happening. Um, another situation here in Monona. Again, uh, still a closed situation and there are a couple of schools on a couple of schools that are still on lockdown we were told that it's just for after school activities but students still at those high schools um, if you are a parent and you are looking to get your child from the school uh, they said uh, they are letting kids out kind of one by one and they uh, they said if you are still trying to get in touch with your child or meet up with them that this wall on the corner here is the place to do that. But once again in Monona, Madison police still on the scene of a shooting between two teenagers. They said the victim was known to the suspect on this Metro bus. All the other students on the bus at this time are considered to be in safe condition. Again, they said the bus was full of students coming from La Follette High School. Um, but that is where we are at this position. Still a uh, closed scene, active scene here in Monona.